Hi guys, it is a frosty night, a frosty winter night here in mid-October, that would be Thursday night, October 20th, 2022, I believe. And there is so much doom and gloom to talk about, I think I might go for three snippets of the collapse tonight, and uh, there is a lot going on here in the in the mainstream media tonight, uh, but we're going to start with uh, this little piece from good old CNBC. CNBC, wow, who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it? White House is pushing ahead research to cool the earth by reflecting back sunlight. Wow, take it away, CNBC, and again, guys, uh, I could sit here and spend a half an hour reading this whole involved article. I'm going to put the link on here. If you like to, what you like, what you hear, you know what I'm saying. If you want to find out more about what you're hearing, at least the mainstream media spin on it, uh, go on the link, finish it yourself. I'm going to read about the first third. <coughs> of this article. The White House is coordinating a five-year research plan uh -huh, to study ways of modifying the amount of sunlight that reaches the Earth to temper the effects of global warming, a process sometimes called solar geoengineering or sunlight reflection and of course, it is sometimes called chemtrails. So we shall see if the chemtrail wackos get their day in court here in the next five years. The research plan will assess climate interventions, including spraying aerosols into the stratosphere to reflect sunlight back into space and should include goals for research, what is necessary to analyze the atmosphere, and do not forget what impacts these kinds of climate interventions may have on Earth, according to the White House's Office of Science and Technology Policy. Yes, some of the techniques such as spraying sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere are known to have harmful effects on the environment and human health. But scientists and climate leaders who are concerned that humanity will overshoot its emission targets say the research is important to figure out how to best balance these risks against a possibly catastrophic rise in the Earth's temperature. So once again, guys, this is one of the classic frying pan versus the fire choices uh, that we need to make here. Uh, frying pan or the fire. We don't do this. We're toast. We do do this. We're toast. It makes no difference. We're damned if we do. We're damned if we don't. You can die in the frying pan or the fire. This is one more frying pan versus the fire debates. <clears throat> Getting ready to research a topic is a very preliminary step, but it is notable the White House is formally engaging with what has largely been seen as the stuff of dystopian fantasy. Yes, in Kim Stanley Robinson's science fiction novel, The Ministry for the Future, a heat wave in India kills 20 million people, and out of desperation, India decides to implement its own strategy of limiting the sunlight that gets to Earth. And later in the article, they talk a lot about this, that there's nothing to stop any country from, from doing this. Uh, India or whoever, 
uh, gets it in their head, this is a good thing. Uh, you know, any country can do this, guys. Uh, this is not one that, that only a few countries uh, have a choice. Anybody can pretty much do it. Uh, you know, Elon Musk could do this. Uh, Jeff Bezos could do it. Uh, Bill Gates could do it. Anyway, uh, eh, that's later in the story. Uh, Chris Saka, the founder of Climate Tech Investment Fund, Lower Carbon Capital, said it is prudent for the White House to be spearheading these research efforts. Quote, sunlight reflection has the potential to safeguard the livelihoods of billions of people, and it is a sign of the White House's leadership that they are advancing this research so that any future decisions can be rooted in science, not geopolitical brinksmanship. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, Harvard professor David Keith, who first worked on the topic in 1999, said he is being taken much more seriously now. He points to formal statements of support for researching sunlight reflection, as they, they choose that term, uh -huh, from the Environmental Defense Fund, the Union of Concerned Scientists, the Natural Resources Defense Council, and the creation of a new group he advises called the Climate Overshoot Commission, an international group of scientists and lawmakers that is evaluating climate interventions in preparation for a world that warms beyond what the Paris Climate Accord recommended. <clears throat> to be clear, to be clear, nobody, nobody is saying sunlight reflection modification is the solution to climate change. Reducing emissions remains the priority. Uh, quote, you cannot judge what the country does on solar radiation modification without looking at what it is doing in emissions reductions because this because the priority is emission reduction, said Janos Pastor, executive director of the Carnegie Climate Governance Initiative, quote, solar radiation modifications will never be a solution to the climate crisis, close quote. Then they look at the history of this. This was first recommended as an idea back in 1965. They have uh, been uh, uh, talking about this. Uh, but I want to touch on, this is a long involved uh, article, but I want to touch base about halfway to two-thirds. I didn't realize CNBC had articles this long. <clears throat> there are significant and well-known risks to these techniques. Sulfur dioxide aerosol injection in particular. First, spraying sulfur into the atmosphere will, quote, mess with the ozone chemistry in a way that might delay the recovery of the ozone layer. There's some fellow named Parson uh, that was introduced in a part I skipped over. Not sure uh, who that is. Also, sulfates injected into the atmosphere eventually come down as acid rain, which affects soil, water reservoirs, and local ecosystems. Third, the sulfur in the atmosphere forms very fine particulates that cause respiratory illness. 
to question then, you know, the, the uh, well, one of the many uh, frying pan versus the fire questions in this debate, one of, one of the many questions then is whether these known effects are more or less harmful than the warming they would offset. And again, I don't know, uh, I, it would take me too long to go find out who this Parsons dude is. But anyway, uh, whoever this guy is, quote, yes, damn it. Damaging the ozone is bad. Damaging the ozone is bad. Acid deposition is bad. Respiratory illness is bad. Absolutely. And spraying sulfur into the stratosphere would contribute in the bad, in the bad direction to all of those effects. But you also have to ask how much and relative to what? Yes, the sulfur already being emitted from the burning of fossil fuels is causing environmental damage and is already killing between 10 and 20 million people a year due to respiratory illness, said Parson. Quote, so that's the way we live already. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the world is getting hotter and there will be catastrophic impacts for many people in the world. Uh, this is back to Mr. Pastor. Uh, quote, there is already too much carbon out there. And even if you stop all emissions today, the global temperature will still be high and will remain high for hundreds of years. So that is why scientists are saying maybe we need something else in addition, not instead of, but maybe in addition to everything else that is being done, the current action or non-action of countries collectively we are committing millions of people to death. That is what we're doing, close quote. So there you go. Frying pan or fire, then it goes on and on and, you know, and breaks down. We've heard it all before on this channel and every other channel about all of the, the ways uh, that this could screw up the damn uh, planet and, uh, you know, it's about how any country can do this and about if you stop doing it, uh, you're really screwed that once you open this tube of toothpaste, you can never put the toothpaste back in the tube. They don't talk about uh, that book, what is it called, Under a Milky White Sky that I need to read, how, how once we do this, we are kissing goodbye blue sky forever. For the rest of human history, the sky will be a milky white in the daytime and not even sure if you're going to be able to see stars at night. Uh, never figured that part out. But anyway, guys, uh, we've heard it all before, but there, there, there's no stopping this. The, the noose is tightening. Uh, we are going to have this going on in, in the next few years. There, 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 there's no stopping it now. Uh, this isn't even a prediction. It's a statement of fact. I, I've been predicting this uh, for 12 years. And, uh, and by all accounts, uh, my predictions are coming true. They're, as I say, they're not even predictions anymore. Uh, anyway, frying pan or fire, but uh, we're going to wrap uh, this one up and we're going to come back and look at green washing coming up in just one minute. Bye guys. Yes, little dog. A couple more snippets.
if I can figure out how to turn just 